I'm uh, working on a, a piece. I intended to get it done over the weekend, but time got away from me. Just giving folks the links to all of these Vatican press releases and giving kind of the background to how did we get from the human fraternity document to this so-called Abrahamic family house project. So the document was signed, just to give folks a brief background, the document itself was signed in early February when the Pope was visiting uh, the United Arab Emirates. Then you fast forward to late August, I believe it was, and that's when this higher the existence of this higher committee for implementing it was revealed. And then fast forward about another month to late September, and there was a big unveiling of this project at a gala type event in New York City. I think that was on uh, September 20th or September 21st, and it coincided with the second official meeting of this higher committee which is, again, is interfaith in nature. It has, um, I think, one of the Pope's private secretaries, a Coptic Egyptian priest, I forget his last name, I think it's Saeed, Monsignor Saeed, and then it has Jewish officials, Muslim officials. So that's just a little background so people understand. And then this latest audience with the Pope on November 15th last week, I guess a couple weeks ago now, um, that was the Pope receiving the Grand Imam with whom he signed the Abu Dhabi document and some other officials with the higher committee, and they were unveiling to the Pope himself, giving him a little preview of this Abrahamic family house project. This is the first time, supposedly, that the Pope has seen it. So that's just a little background to the story. Right. Yeah, and it, I'd like to say that the idea that there are three Abrahamic faiths is abhorrent to Catholicism. Yes, it there is. There is only one Abrahamic faith, and that is Christianity. Right, which St. Paul well, what about is... Ex- Judaism? Judaism is the... Te- no, modern Judaism does not follow the teaching of Moses. Moses says if you've committed sins, take an animal to the temple and participate in blood atonement sacrifice for the forgiveness of your sins. They don't do that. They don't have the temple anymore. Christ said, we saw it in yesterday's gospel, actually in, in the old in the old liturgy that the, the temple would be destroyed within a generation of his crucifixion and it was in the year AD 70 so modern day Judaism does not follow the tenets in fact Christ you know they said well, we're the sons of Abraham and Christ said if you were the sons of Abraham you would receive my word that's right taught them that in, Ju- in, in John's gospel so that's a very important statement and then Islam Islam denies so much of the Old Testament and almost all of the New Testament. And mm-hmm. again, we have to remember that if Abraham could somehow be brought into a time capsule, he would have recognized Christ. In fact, That's Christ right. said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. Islam and modern Judaism are not Abrahamic faiths. Christ so many times, probably half a dozen times in the Gospels, rebukes the Judaism, even of his day, saying that they don't follow Abraham. That's right. That's right. And obviously, St. Paul, all throughout his epistles in the New Testament, reiterates that the faith of Abraham is faith in Jesus Christ, not in the Mosaic Law. Yeah. Because Abraham received the promise before the law was even established. And the promise ultimately was for the coming of the Messiah. Yeah. Yep. So I, I'm happy to see that Vigano is tackling this. Uh, he's exposing it. This is, I think of all the blunders and mistakes of Francis, the Abu document is the most egregious. It is the worst. And I'm glad to see that Bishop Schneider has latched on to that one like a pit bull because it's the most obvious to say that God wills the diversity, a plurality and diversity of religions as it's stated in the document. The document hasn't been fixed. There hasn't been a footnote. There's been nothing to correct it. It's wrong. And now we see it's going towards interfaith worship. Right. Uh, And and I kind of wonder, Matt, is this a way for the Holy See to get money from the Islamic nations? Well, that's what's been so confusing to me about this whole initiative from the get-go is that it's so contrary to the to Islam in general that 
Islam is about the last religion on earth that is, if you read the texts of the religion, like the Quran and the, the life of Muhammad, they're not interested in dialogue. <laughs> I, I, it's never made sense to me why the, you know, the more or less head of Sunni Islam, I mean, they don't, Islam doesn't have the equivalent of a pope per se, but the grand imam of Al-Hazar University and Mosque in Cairo is a very high-ranking esteemed official throughout, you know, Muslim believers, at least in Sunni Islam. So it's never made sense to me why they would want to sign on to something like this. The only thing that one thought that has crossed my mind is that there is a doctrine in Islam called taqiyya. Mm. You might you might be familiar familiar with that, and it's basically the doctrine of deception that uh, Muhammad in his the record of his life is known to have taught that war quote war is deceit so that you know in battling against the infidels which we would be infidels according to them it's morally permissible to deceive infidels into thinking that they are that you are their friend in order to kind of lull them into a false sense of security so that's my concern as to what's going on here I could be wrong, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, I mean, no real Mohammedan believes that Catholicism or the Pope is legit. No, certainly not. No, not at all. So they probably laugh it up to think that they got the Pope to sign this document. I would, I would think so, because I, I'm pretty sure that even in the United, you know, the United Arab Emirates is trying to tout itself as the new global center of this uh, religious indifferentism, essentially, but I, st I think it might still be illegal for people to convert from Islam to anything else in that nation. Yeah, and, and Francis boasted that, you know, he every time he's in front of a Mohammedan audience, we do not proselytize. We do not right. proselytize. Right, exactly. So they've, I mean, yeah, I, I can't imagine the the Muslims not laughing about it behind closed doors because it's just they know that they've won that they've won. They've convinced the leader of the Catholic Church that we're no that Islam is no longer a threat. Yeah. And one more detail that's kind of frightening about this whole thing is that this campus of interfaith chapels, a Christian one, a Mohammedan one and a Jewish one, it's dedicated to St. Francis of Assisi. Did you catch that? I believe I did, yeah. Oh. And it's the same thing they did in the Vatican Gardens, you know, the tree planting ceremony, the pretext was to consecrate the synod, Amazon Synod, to St. Francis of Assisi. So if folks want to, to learn a little bit more about the true St. Francis, I, I reprinted on the Catholic Family News website an excellent article by my predecessor, John Venari, called The Spirit of Assisi versus St. Francis of mm, Assisi. Good. So that's available for folks on the website. Yeah, Francis has been used for the Assisi meeting in 86, the second Assisi meeting, the third Assisi meeting, really the patron of, or supposed patron of, of Bergoglio's entire pontificate. Correct. And now this disaster, interfaith chapels. Francis and, uh, would not be happy. Right. No, and again, it's it's so ironic because, as you know, St. Francis of Assisi traveled with his, his first group of Franciscan brothers to the Holy Land during, I believe it was the Second Crusade, either the Second or the Third. And they went there, you know, prepared for martyrdom. They went there to convert the Sultan and the, the Mohammedan army. They didn't go there to dialogue and, and form human fraternity. <laughs> not not apart from faith in Jesus Christ anyway. Right. And I I believe famously Francis told the told the Sheikh there, this is in the twelve hundreds, uh, that Muhammad is a liar. Yes. <laughs> and he's a false prophet. Told him that to his face. 